Everybody likes a walk in the woods, but I'm in rather special woods in North Hampshire on the Surrey border because this woods has a hidden history. Over a hundred years ago, this was the single biggest camp anywhere in Britain for Canadian soldiers. They arrived en masse from across the Atlantic to receive their training before they went across to the battlefields of northern France. This place would have been teeming with soldiers and now, over a hundred years later, it's been returned to forest and parkland. It's still owned by the Ministry of Defence and the army still practice on there. And I've just had a member of the army who's just driven up in a jeep and told me that. So I'm going to have to watch out. But we're on the explore to see what we can find that was left of this massive great military establishment. It's quite lovely round here. It's beautiful for a walk with the dog. There's a slight rumble of the A3 which is a little way over there, but you soon lose track of that. What we're looking for is the remains of evidence of that great camp that was here. The most obvious one is the roadways that we're walking on. They crisscross through, they're still here, they hadn't been removed. But pretty well everything else has. This place had everything. There were hundreds and hundreds of huts for the soldiers to be billeted to sleep in. There was a cinema, an open air theatre. There was a main street with a bank and it had shops, it had a cafe. It had so much here, the facilities for the men that they would call their home for just a few months before they travel off on their adventure into Northern France. There was also a military hospital here, a large one. It was known as Camp 15 and it was the Connaught Military Hospital. And it was very important because men could be treated for all sorts of things that they suffered from day to day. Many of them suffered simply in the English weather, but others would suffer from the wounds they received in France and they would come back here. It's very difficult to even imagine that this place was a town, but it was. It was known as Tin Town to the locals because the buildings were all made of corrugated iron. And there are a network of pathways here and banks and ditches. But apart from that, there's very little indication that there was once a village, a town full of people that lived here. So I'm currently walking alongside a bank and I've just tripped over. I've noticed an awful lot of this stone stone doesn't mean a lot but you don't get a lot of it round here so this has been brought in so that would have been a building material part of the the network of buildings that were on this site and they've all gone all gone but look corrugated iron really pleased to find this because this is what the camp was built on but look behind it a, a structure made of rock really rare on this site but what isn't rare is these things paving stones everywhere. They ripped the road up and left the stones. It's really peculiar. But as we were scouting around, Lenny and I came across this. It's a water container or a water drum. It's very old because it's using a riveted construction. They don't make them like that anymore, which is quite unusual. But what we wanted to find was this eventually. It's a bunker. Len's got his head down in there amongst the concrete and the steel reinforcement that you can see. We're walking down the middle of it at the moment because it has been deliberately collapsed to stop people getting in. We wanted to find one, we never found the other one in the end, but the other one goes really deep, so they've deliberately pulled it down to stop people getting inside. But look what we found. It's a coffee pot and it dates from the 1940s. How cool is that? This is the site of the number 15 Connaught Military Hospital. 620 beds catering for the wounded, those that picked up a disease and sickness, and of course, those who suffered 
from the 1918 to 1920 worldwide pandemic of the Spanish flu. And those that did die ended up here in the parish church of St Mary's. Row upon row upon row of Canadian dead. And as we were going along here, something really, really spooky happened. Just listen. Gunfire from the nearby Borden Range. But we were delighted, really pleased to have found this. It's the grave of a nursing sister who fell victim, one of the many victims of the Spanish flu. Back on the main road, there's the A3. The trees in front of us in a line were their maples, as is the one here. They were donated by the Canadian government to commemorate those that lost their lives here. Even though the camp has long gone and all that we're left with is marks in the ground and a few bits of tin and other things, the memory of the Canadians and their time here lives on. And I'm here at the memorial to those Canadian soldiers.